viewers, and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Commercialization. This week, we're going to look through a little bit of a different lens. I have a couple of them just right here. One of my girls, I've been trying to get her on the show for a little while, and this is Della Ray. She has I love E Y E L U V dot US, and she is an entrepreneur, a whim, a woman, a mother and just rocking it out here, having her own glasses, industry, pop-up shop, and getting herself out there. So welcome, Della Ray Howard. Hi. Hi, girl. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? So I knew we had to bring you on this show when we have people from Hawaii. You know, everybody needs some really nice glasses. These ones were custom made by Della for me. So if you want some as cool as these, you have to ask her for them. But she has an array of different types of styles, different colors, uh, even some customs. If you want some little feathers or some fun bedazzles on them. She uh, does pop-up shops. Uh, I've actually personally helped her out with some of her little pop-ups. And so we just want to talk to her a little bit about, you know, how she maneuvered this type of industry through COVID. Our, our theme has been over the past couple of weeks of people who have turned their passions into careers. And so I would like to ask you first of like, how did you come up with this idea, Della? Um, it's a kind of a funny story. I was waiting tables at a restaurant here in Portland. And in the summertime, when we have the patio open, uh, we can wear our sunglasses on the patio. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, when I was waiting tables, people would just comment on my sunglasses and I started selling them right off my face to uh, our guests. And I would go home uh, in the evening and my partner would ask me, what, what happened to your sunglasses? And I said, I sold them again, right off my face. And he says, why aren't you doing this for business? And four years later, here I am. And so your current model is pop-up shop, which is literally like a easy up tent with, as you can see right behind her, just like a nice little display. How do you uh, get into this type of, you know, industry? Are you at like local markets or like what kind of marketing do you do for yourself? Well, first it just started out as um, my friends that throw, throw events and shows uh, like house music shows around town. And I would just they asked me if I wanted to come in and sell sunglasses um, during these events, like at nightclubs. And I was really surprised at how successful it was because, you know, you're in a nightclub, but it's like people love wearing sunglasses at night. So it worked out really well. And then it just kind of uh, snowballed from there. Just um, people started seeing me out and uh, I would get invited to different events. And um, I do source a lot of them just through um, Facebook event pages. I'll just go and kind of scroll through and see what's going on around town. And um, I'll reach out to the producer, the organizer and say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I have to offer. Um, would you like to, would you, are you interested in having me as a vendor? So as everybody just saw, that is uh, Della's Facebook page. Um, so are the only ways you're marketing yourself is via Facebook and Instagram? Or, or do you have a website or is it just really social media and word of mouth? I'm just doing social media and word of mouth right now. We're still working on the website. It's um, It's been a bit of a uh, arduous process, but we're getting there. So eventually there will be a website where people can order glasses through there. But right now it's all just event based. You're doing so great though. I mean, just the word of mouth and really just taking things right off of your face and building a whole career out of it. That's absolutely phenomenal. Your cell phone, self run. A uh, single mother, as I hear, also as well. Yeah. How how do you manage um, your work time? Do do you like in these events? And your when did you realize this was going to be your full time job? When did you stop going to like waiting tables? Uh, when I got so busy that I that I just I didn't have time to wait tables anymore. I was just you know this is by far more lucrative than anything I've ever done in my entire life. And I was just really happy to be able to quit serving. <laughs> and um, it was the best. I was really scared at first. I, but all of my friends and everyone around me was very supportive. Like, Della, you can do this. Just just quit that job and put, throw, throw yourself into this. And that's what I did. And I haven't had to wait a table in four and a half years now. And so COVID hit during those four and a half years. 
And so it's a little bit difficult to think of like, when you're thinking of a pop-up shop, it's something that's very in-person industry. How did you try to like survive through that or pivot through that? It was kind of, it was pretty difficult at first. Um, it was, I was scheduled to do a lot of festivals. I was supposed to, the, the, the summer that COVID hit that first summer, um, I was, that was supposed to be my first um, circuit, like festival circuit. And all of that got canceled, obviously. So I was with not having a website or any other way to sell. I got kind of nervous and luckily I have um, a lot of support around me, um, but I would just start setting up shop in my backyard and people would ask me like, Hey, um, I really need some sunglasses. I'm like, okay, well, let me curate some looks for you. Um, what's, what sizes do you like shapes, you know, whatever. And I would pull those and I would set up shop in my backyard and I would either, if they were comfortable with it, I would stay in the backyard, you know, six feet or whatever. And, um, or I would just stay in the house and let them chop. I'm not going to lie. I am one of those people. So anybody who's in Hawaii, just know, um, even if you live out of state from where Dell is in Portland, you can definitely subscribe and get some awesome glasses. She hooked me up. I definitely needed a little bit of extra eyewear during the whole COVID. She would send me pictures of different styles and the color that I was requesting, photographs of them, and then send me a, you know, array of different styles. And then I could just pick what I wanted and then she would send them to me. I think I got them in like two or three days. It was absolutely phenomenal. How do you pick your pricing structure? What is your pricing structure? Um, well, I just do one for 20 or three for 45. Um, and it seems to go over really well. Sometimes people are like, <laughs> sometimes people are like $20. Oh, that's too much. But other people, they don't bat an eye at it. So it's, um, it's a good structure. And some things are a little bit more than others, just depending on um, size and style. And um, if I've added anything to them. Yeah, so she does do custom as well which are super fun. If you saw from the beginning of the show, we have feathers and a lot of other things. Um, it's just a great model. I think it's a lot, it's really different. You see some other people out there that have some pretty general styles. These are quite different. As you can see, you could like pull them up, you got a feather on them, all different styles, shapes, colors. She's very intuitive to picking them yourself. How do you pick your glasses? Um, there's a couple of different places that I source from, um, and I just go through and I scroll and I scroll and I scroll until I find like really cool stuff. Um, I kind of started buying stuff that I like. And then once I started doing this, I realized, oh, you know, there are different shapes and other things that I don't normally wear that I need to have for, for other people. Right. Yeah. She does do some crazy ones out there that say like no on them, but then <laughs> you come around and you take a picture of yourself. They say on, yeah, those which are fun. is really fun. Um, she has a totally different style. I think that we went to a pop-up shop one time and there was another sunglasses space, but she has a completely different style than anybody else. So it wasn't a threat or anything strange on them. They could definitely come and it's different. You know, sunglasses is a very, very wide market, as people in Hawaii may know already. Um, if you guys need glasses, any out there in comparison to Portland, uh, she's here for you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the pop-up shop mentality. So why did, although we hit COVID, like, and we're doing Facebook and Instagram, why did you pick pop-up shop? I mean, I, I heard a lot about your networking and your support from the community and people asking you to do that. But like, why did you pick a pop-up shop rather than some other model of working? I know you got to like fit everything in your car. You have a lot of inventory with glasses. Sure. Like, how does that work? Um, it's, it's just the best platform, I think, for, especially because you're putting something on your face and it's like, you want to, you, you want to, you want to put it on and see yourself and it's so much it, it's the experience of being able to do that that i think really draws people in and it was just the best the best way to do it yeah it is a lot of work 
I do pack in and pack out. And sometimes some of these events I do like are in a park and I have to you know, climb a climb a really big hill to get there. But you know, it's worth it and it's so much fun. And um people they just love it. That's like you get the whole experience that way. And so you're self-run, self-owned, and self-marketed. If anybody just saw Instagram right now, um, we'll show that again in a minute, but you are like a one-man show. How, how have you thought about bringing in other people or is this just like all you and everything you do? Yeah, I have a few friends that help me. Uh, they'll help me set up um, and, you know, because a lot of times I'll, you know, I'm a human. I need to have a bathroom break and <laughs> so they'll be hanging out with me and they'll watch the watch the table. And sometimes, you know, I'll be able to take off for like, you know, 30 minutes and my rounds at the event. And I'll come back and they'll be like, hey, I sold like three pairs of glasses. That's awesome. Great. So I have um, a lot of people that want to be involved in it. You and do a lot of cross as well. So you are a walking billboard for yourself. I mean, exactly. I know that people are, like you said, buying them directly off your face, which is so fun. Um, you have a style and a facade that totally draws people in. I know that I worked a table with Zella before, and I feel like like you said, I was there just to set up and take down. You are the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've um, I've actually I was gonna have um, my partner Rob. He was gonna run uh, run the booth for me one time. I was out I was out at a festival, and they really wanted me there. And I said, well, hey, I have you know Rob can come and he can run it and set it up, and it'll it'll be great. But they responded with, well, we really want the Della experience. It's just not the same without you. So <laughs> it, gets, it gets pretty wild back there, but people, yeah. have it. it's a party. It's, it's, um, it's something to do at an event where you don't have to leave to go do, do it. It's like, it's my table, my booth is, an, it's, it's a party within itself. It's almost like a little escape from what you're doing and where you're at into something else. And it keeps people, it keeps people there and people come to these events a lot of the time not planning on coming out but because they know that i'm there and they know that that's where they have to go in order to get these glasses and um that as as a producer of an event or an organizer they love that because i'm bringing people in and then they stay and they spend money at the bar and they pay you know for if there's a cover to get in and so it works out really well for everyone and you do need to try things on. So I recently, I mean, I work from home now. I started staring at a screen and it's different from sunglasses, but you, I started to think, okay, I need some glasses to put on my face so that I can look at the blue screen. And then they have this Zilu and Zenny's and all these places where they have this, like, try it on, take a picture of my face and put them on my face. But I don't know if they're going to look good. Like, are they really going to look that good when I put them on my face? So I appreciate the experience of being full, you know, in the realm, putting them on, trying them on. I mean, you have a million different designs for a million different faces. So, I mean, as you can see in the background right there, she has something for everybody. It's it's a whole, like you said, an experience to come try something on and pick it out and go. You can't, I mean, you can send me some pictures, but who knows what it's going to actually look on, on somebody's face. So the model you have is really great. When we look at pop-ups, your pop-up, as I've known you for a couple of years, your pop-up has grown. It is, you have friends who've created signs and logos and the experience. I think you just yeah. got like some yellow backgrounds, which really like brighten up the light um, right now you have some pink in the background what kind of things do you choose to really set yourself out from other pop-up shops because when we're doing pop-up shop you have your shop next to somebody else next to somebody else next to somebody else correct yeah yeah so what do you do to like really set yourself out from whether there's another glasses shop or just another shop in general to really bring people in is it the location you pick at the festival or at the event is it the uh, lights and experience? Like, what do you do? What is your I step? Do, well, the, the, um, my, 
business colors are like a really bright pink and um, almost like a turquoise blue. So I just try to go with anything that's eye-catching. Like um, my, my Easy Up um, pop-up is bright, bright yellow. And it almost, when all the walls are on it, it kind of looks like a circus tent. So it's like people see it and they're like, oh, what's going on over there? What is that? Um, and then I just bring like really fun stuff along. Like I have a disco ball that I hang from the top of it in the middle. I have um, all sorts of just like really kooky, funny things that have nothing to do with glasses whatsoever that I just set up and like, like weird pictures or like I have this um, plaque that I found at Goodwill. Uh, it's, a, it's a plaque of Jesus. And I like put gems are all over it. And I glued a disco ball on top of his head and, <laughs> and I wrapped it in fairy lights. So it's like, it lights up and people are just like, Oh, well, how much for that? Yeah. Or I'll bring like a really old fake phone and just have that out on the table. And people are like, Oh, it's for me. And then they end up coming in and buying stuff. So it's just like funny little things that set you apart from from just someone who's just sitting there in a chair waiting for you to walk up to them. You know, it's, it draws you in. I love that. I really love that. I think that that just sets you out from the rest. And so when we're doing these pop-up shops, do we have like, is there, do you have like a range that you're willing to pay for to put out to be at these events? Like, is there a cost to them? Do you get them at no cost? Like I'm sure there's some networking involved for some of the events where, they, like you mentioned, they want you to be there because it's going to bring in a crowd. How, what is your kind of like range for output to get the input from these places? Um, a lot of events, it really just depends on the event. Um, a lot of the stuff that my friends put on, they want, they'll, they just want me there. So I don't, they're like, no vendor fee, don't worry about it. Sometimes it's 10% uh, of my sales. Sometimes it's just a flat hundred dollars. Um, some festivals are a different story though. There's a few that I've turned down uh, for the summer just because it was just the price, the, the vendor fee was just a little bit too, too high for me. And I can do that, but I'd have to raise my prices in order to um, kind of make that money back and have it be worth my while, which I don't really like to do, but that's also why people spend, you know, $12 on a hot dog at a festival because <laughs> that's, that's why people, you know, a lot of people don't understand why these things are so expensive, but it's because of the fees that we have to pay in order to be there. Totally understandable. And so would you prefer to pay 10% of your sales or a flat rate for a booth? Um, it, it's hard to, it's hard to say sometimes because I, I, I want to support these venues as well. Like a lot of the venues that I'm going to, they're owned uh, and operated by my close friends. So um, and I always want to support them and support what they're doing and support their business. Um, so sometimes I'm like, hey, well, why don't we see, why don't we wait? And um, I'll either do the $100 or if 10% is more than that, why don't we go with that way? Because, you know, they're supporting me and I'm supporting them. Yeah, that's fantastic. I was just wondering of like how much you feel like you're going to make, how big is the event? You know, it's really, there's a lot that goes into it, especially with pop-ups. And, yeah, and I always ask, I always ask um, what ticket sales have been, uh, how, what the capacity is, um, stuff like that, just so I can get a range on, especially with how much stuff I need to bring, how much inventory. Yeah, I mean, when we went to some of those events, you are bringing like stacks of boxes of different styles and what style do I need for this event? What kind of target audience am I looking at? Yeah. Um, what kind of range have you done? I mean, you said a little bit of like techno or house events, festivals, uh, park events. Uh, what do all those things have you done? Is that yeah. you done a range? Most of these events are all um, just like electronic style based music um but i just they just opened up a food cart pod like literally in my backyard and we are we are over there all the time now and on sundays they have a market and we just uh started uh, getting to talking with the guy that runs it and he says yeah come on over anytime it's 
you can set up right here. It doesn't even have to be on a Sunday. Every time I go into that uh, food cart pod, someone stops me and asks me about my sunglasses. So I'm going to be over there, uh, I think this weekend. Yep, yeah, I'll be over there this weekend. And there are people who are really looking forward to it. It's like, I've been talking you up. Everyone's really excited. And he only wants $45 per, per event that I do over there. So that's really inexpensive. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I can literally walk from my house over there. I'm just wow. Oh, wow. Kids at home. And if I need to come check on them, I can come check on them or they can walk over and get lunch or whatever. And they also, they're a big help too. They help set yeah, up. If it's walking fast, you'll down. have them carry the cart, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they help set up and they take, you know, sunglasses out of the little bags and they help me get them all organized. They're, they're pretty cute about it. So as being, you know, a single entrepreneur woman, do you have any other advice for other working mothers out there and, you know, trying to put their passions into their career? Um, I just say, don't, don't be scared. Just, just get out there and do it. Uh, I wasted way too much time waiting tables and being nervous about giving up that part of my income, but it was totally worth it. And I wish that I would have just done it a lot sooner. And this gal, if I can tell you, you guys, she made it through COVID with a full in-person pop-up career. She has literally made it and thrived, okay? Because I have known her for several years and I've known her since when this whole thing started to like come about. And I was worried for her for a second there in COVID. I was like, what is this girl going to do? She popped up and popped off. Okay. Like she has literally made an entire career out of this passion project. She runs it solo. She doesn't have, she has all the inventory herself. She's a working mother, single mother, you know, entrepreneur woman. And I'm just like, so excited to see what else you bring to the table because you have events. I, I just see you on Facebook, like all the time having different events. And if you look at her Instagram again, it's just her fashioning her own products. And I look at them and I'm like, where are those yellow ones with the white rims you're supposed to send me? <laughs> I've even gotten on a little subscription plan, you know, she'll, she'll tailor to your needs and make sure that you're getting the right style, right equipment for your specific uh, budget. And she'll definitely send them to you within a couple of days. So if you had any advice, I know we talked about women entrepreneurs, but if you had any advice for entrepreneurs as a whole, like just trying to build a business and trying to build a pop-up in general, what are the hardest things that you deal with with a pop-up business? Uh, it's just setting the time aside to make sure that you are staying organized and um, making sure that you are taking track of your inventory uh, stuff like that. Like you have to, it's, it was difficult for me at first thinking, well, I'm not, I'm doing this, but I'm not making any money doing this right now, but I have to do that in order to make the money. So just because you're, you know, you're not at an event, you're still doing something for your business that you will, that will help you, you know, make more money in the long run. How many glasses do you think you have on inventory at the moment? Oh, oh, <laughs> um, well, we just redid inventory a couple of weeks ago and there's over there's over 300 different styles in my oh. in my Shopify account, yeah. Oh goodness. Okay, well, I got to get on my next uh, my next round. <laughs> and I just I put in a new order the other day and I'll have like six new styles coming in uh, probably tomorrow or Friday. Well, it sounds like you're staying so busy and you're staying lucrative and you're supporting your family and you're supporting yourself and you're, you're happy with what you're doing now. No more waiting tables, no more dealing with that type of uh, industry. You are your own boss. You have made it through COVID. So, you know, you're thriving. You are set up for the summer. There's a lot of events that she will be at. Um, but pe for people in the Hawaii industry, um, she's out there. I know y'all are going to need some glasses for the summer. So definitely hit her up. She is E-Y-E-L-U-V dot U-S on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, she has great deals. She will send them to you in a couple of days if you have an event to go to. 
uh, definitely contact Della Ray Howards over here. She is making things happen. She definitely has a great style. She'll custom make anything for you if you ask her for a couple extra bucks. It's all within a reasonable range for pricing. And I just think that she is a golden star working her bum off. So I really appreciate you coming on here today. I think you're doing great work. And I think you have an amazing business model. Pop-up shops were definitely not easy to make it through COVID, but you did. I mean, you definitely made that happen. And now you have a full schedule for the summer. I think you're booked out, aren't you? I mean, you got a lot of things going on this summer. Yeah, I'm booked out for the rest of July. Um, June is filling up. Um, yeah, I'm actually even double booked on some days doing daytime <laughs> beach events. And then I'll have like a couple hours to get back to the house, restock, and then do um and a nighttime event i'm doing um yeah there's a there's a group that i'm i'm involved with called the uv collective and they throw parties um uh, on the river in portland and i'll be doing that during the day and then i'm booked for uh an arnold and lane dirty bird show uh that night all so, right okay yeah. okay well uv that totally matches your style i mean yeah, UV exactly. glasses, like that just sounds like the perfect uh partnership right there yeah. So guys, I'm just letting you know for audience, everything that I've heard out of this has been consistent from other shows that we've had is networking. Networking is key. Having that support, having friends that believe in you, not giving up, letting yourself uh, put a little money in to get a lot of money out and never forgetting that you're going to get somewhere with that. So thank you so much, Della, for being on the show. I know we're at time now, but if you guys want to learn a little bit more about making some more money, starting your own businesses, turning your passions into careers, and come back and watch Adventures in Commercialization every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.